Hey everyone, it's Lieutenant Splitsecki with the 501st Cartoffles All Starch Taters! Today I'm going to bring to you a top secret potato type that I have not been able to talk about until today. Today we're going to talk about Cartoffle Creek, obligatory knife hand. Cartoffle Creek is a game for two to four potatoes. It plays in about 30 to 45 minutes. It is a game where you are going to mash your competition. You will fry them into submission. You will destroy them on the field of battle. This game has massive appeal, and you're going to need to choose which team you're going to root for. That's enough potatoes for now. Let's take it to the battlefield, and I'll tell you how it plays. Hey everyone, welcome back to the table. Let's talk about Kartoffel Creek. Now Kartoffel Creek is a real-time strategy game for two to four players. You're going to need one potato. You're going to have a potato command board, a ruler, a number of dice, shield tokens, and cards that you're going to draft. You also have a number of equipment, parts, and weapons that you will place into your potato after you have drafted cards. Now to begin the game, you're going to select a first player, uh, either by die roll, whatever you want to do, select a first player, and then you're going to go into a draft. And you're going to deal out eight cards to the center of the table, and players will take turns starting with the first player, and they'll take turns selecting a card. Now this is going to continue until all players involved in the potato war have eight cards. So. Let's say that we ended up drafting all eight of these cards. At that point, you're going to then place these equipment cards into your potato command board, and you're going to program them into one of the eight slots. Now this is important because some of the weapons have accuracy that will allow the player to change the die roll during combat to target a different equipment part. So you likely, we don't wanna put treads next to each other, so we'll put treads over here, put a shield plate at one, the energy quell is going to go to five. Let's go ahead and place our weapons around. All right, so we have our potato command board all set up. You're gonna start with eight energy, although if you have drafted the energy quell, you'll get a plus two to your energy that will take you to 10 for the turn. And then all of these different weapons are going to have different attributes. So your treads are going to allow you to move. So for one energy, you can move four inches. For every eight inches you move, you'll deal one damage to a potato if you ram into it. You have a number of different weapons like the energy waffle, which is going to be your short range, zero to three, but deals massive amounts of damage to fry the competition. Your cartoffel cannon is going to, it is a medium ranged weapon that's going to deal a decent amount of, of damage. Your shield plate absorbs damage from weapons two spaces away, so you can actually uh, stop damage that would be dealt to your weapons. Your arms are going to allow you to uh, damage, remove parts, and do some really interesting things that way. Uh, you have your sniper rifle, which is the longest range in the game, and it has the best accuracy, but deals the least amount of damage. You have, obviously, your tread again. So, What's going to happen is you're going to take all of these parts that you've drafted from the supply and you are going to then take your potato and outfit it for combat. Now, since joining the 501st Cartoffels, he has slimmed down, he's shaved off a few pounds, he's been skinned a little bit, so he's lost a little weight, but that's okay. So we have all of our parts now on our potato and he is ready for combat. Now to begin combat, to begin the game, each player is going to take their potato and they will place it 18 inches from every other potato on the table. So you have a handy dandy ruler that will help you determine range between potatoes. Then players are going to expend energy to take actions. So you can move and target your enemies based on, again, the range of the weapon you are selecting. And then what's going to happen is the player is going to roll the d8 and that will determine on your opponent's board which weapon or which part they're going to attack. 
So here on the five, our opponent would target our energy quell, and then depending on whatever weapon they're gonna use, let's say they were using medium range with their cartoffel cannon, they would then roll the d4 that would determine the damage. So two gives us two damage. So we would move down to two. Now when the energy quell is destroyed, it actually creates a nuclear explosion and we have to roll the d4 to determine how much damage our spud gets baked. He is definitely going to come under a lot of pressure. Situation basically boils down to this being destroyed and then taking damage on the potato command board. And again, having weapons and equipment parts destroyed is not good for many different reasons, but after a part is destroyed, your opponent can now target this slot on the potato board if they roll it, or if they have the plus or minus one to the roll, they can now deal damage instead of to the part, they can deal damage directly to your potato. So your potato will start to take damage based on whatever has been destroyed and whatever your opponent's roll. So each of these parts is going to have a shield token on them for a number of victory points. When that part is destroyed, this shield token goes to the opponent that destroyed it and you remove the card and then these shield tokens are worth victory points at the end of the game. So the player that has the most shield token victory points at the end of the game is declared the winner. The game ends when a potato is eliminated. So when a potato is completely mashed and fried into oblivion, the game will end and players will add up their shield tokens. When the chips are down and your spud is coming under a lot of pressure, he's going to have to try to outmaneuver his opponents and he's going to need to maybe make some very quick thinking wedge maneuvers and really just needs to survive because Kartoffelkrieg is all about being the last Tater standing. This has been Lieutenant Spud Secchi of the 501st Kartoffels. Remember, all starch Taters. This has been your overview of Kartoffelkrieg. We'll catch you next time.